What's up power users extreme here back with another video if you live in America We just finished our Thanksgiving holiday, and I'm thankful for all of you watching this video. I Appreciate you Leave me a comment on what you are thankful for Now let's get back to the video Today's video we're gonna be overclocking our GPU. I feel like we're beating a dead horse with all this GPU shortage bullshit, but hey, that's reality. I'll be using MSI Afterburner and Call of Duty Vanguard to test our overclock. This method works for any GPU, not just the 3080 that I'm rocking. If you have a 3080 or a 3090, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to show you why you may not be getting a good overclock with your card. The first thing we want to do is Google MSI Afterburner. Find this website and hit this download link down here. Then we want to find this Combuster utility. It's a graphic stress test and GPU benchmarking tool. We're gonna use both in conjunction when we do our overclock. Now, you have MSI Afterburner downloaded, you have Combuster installed, great. It's gonna look like this over here. This is at stock settings currently. You can see up here all these diagnostics. We want to get this. So we come over to this little cog wheel here. It's our settings. First thing we want to do is go to the monitoring tab. To get this up here, we need to highlight, check mark the particular setting we want to see. And then we have to hit the show on screen display check mark. So for me, the GPU temperature is important, the GPU usage is important, the memory usage is important, the core clock, the memory clock, the CPU temperature, the CPU usage. The CPU clock, the RAM usage, the frame rate, and then my frame rate min, average, max, and 1% low. I'm gonna check mark that as well. The next thing, we have to go to the next tab, the on screen display. We have to choose which buttons toggle our on screen display show on screen display or hide on screen display i chose t to toggle the numpad star to show the numpad backslash to hide now to get this d3 d12 these frame rates here we have to go to the benchmarking tab begin recording end recording my numpad plus will begin it my numpad minus will end it and then you can hit apply what's up guys so we're back in the game and this is at default settings with MSI afterburner not touching a single thing on it I want to show you first the settings that I'm using graphic settings um, 2560 by 1440 I do have a Dell S3220 DGF monitor at 100, almost 165 hertz refresh rate. No vertical sync on. Um, all your standard stuff. Quality, we're at custom. Everything's on high. The highest it can go. Um, Fidelity FX off. Anti-aliasing filmic SMA T2X. Depth of field's on 85%. DLSS is off and so on and so on Dude, before I can ever hear my footsteps, now I can hear the 
To overclock, I'm going to make one adjustment in the settings panel real quick, and that is the fan. I'm going to enable user to find software automatic fan control. MSI Afterburner does a great job of setting up a fan curve right out of the box. Just by clicking that sets up a nice fan curve. I'm just going to leave it as that. I'm not going to mess with that. Um, beyond just enabling it. Next, I've already set up a pretty good overclock for my GPU. A plus 150 on the core and 1100 on the memory. And this seems to work quite well for this graphics card. Um, again, if you have a 3080 or a 3090, at the end of this video I'm going to go into a little bit more detail as to why you may not be getting this but a rule of thumb for anyone who doesn't have a 3080 or a 3090 um, is to start at 25, 25 megahertz on the core 100 megahertz on the ram and move up in increments of 5 megahertz from there or 10 megahertz depending on um, what your card is actually capable of doing but we'll get into that right now the com buster that we installed before we're going to use this as a benchmark to test stability as we do our increments. So we want to run this stress test and it's going to pull up this window here. I like to make it a little bit smaller, minimize that, match these two like this. I'm going to turn off that for now. As we move these little dials up, this is running a stress test and a benchmark um, almost live so to speak you'll notice once you hit kind of a threshold um, this will start glitching or it'll crash that's when you know you've gone too far too far and then you can back off from there but basically you want to move your power limit all the way to 110 percent as in like this card temperature limit all the way up and then start moving these dials 25 megahertz um, 100 megahertz or 50 megahertz if you want to start smaller and then 10 5 to 10 megahertz increments from there i'm going to enable that um, and this is a pretty good overclock for me it's about 2100 megahertz with the boost on the gpu it's about 7000 um, megahertz on the memory maybe a little higher 
What's up guys? This is with the overclock. As you can see here, our default GPU benchmark, our average frame rate was 79, low 64, with a high of 101, with a 1% of 54. With the overclock, our average was 108, with a low of 92, and a high of 126 with a 1% of 69 so we're looking at potentially a 20 to 30 frame per second difference with the overclock what's up my 3080 and 3090 power user friends so we're over here at videocards.com <clears throat> there's a defining issue with these two different cards when it comes to overclocking and this is a manufacturer's response to the 3080 and 3090 crash of desktop issues i wanted to highlight this because when you're overclocking you could face this depending on which model of the card that you've gotten i'm not going to go into all this i'm going to leave the link in the description below but the main problem is is the issue is likely related to the capacitors installed on the back of the gpu in this generation, the RTX 30, this is actually very easy to see as the most manufacturers do not cover that area with the backplate. There are six necessary bottom capacitors that are responsible for filtering the NVVDD MSVDD GPU voltages. The better the filtering, the less likely the card is to encounter issues at high frequencies. Factory overclocking. The problem was first reported when custom boards were reaching 2 GHz plus clock speeds during gameplay. This resulted in a sudden crash of the desktop without any warning. The worse the voltage filtering and the higher the clock speed the custom design was, the more likely users were to encounter this problem. As you can see in this diagram, this is from NVIDIA to all the manufacturers. NVIDIA states that only one custom um, filtering is required. The rest can be non-custom. As you can see here, these are the custom um, capacitors. These are not custom. These are custom. Now, 
to give you a little bit more detail what that looks like on the back of the card this particular card the tough gaming overclock edition from nvidia has all six capacitors custom this is the card i actually have specifically for this reason that's why i'm able to reach 2100 megahertz on the core clock without any issues other manufacturers if you go to msi 3080 um, back plate you'll notice that these are not custom and this one is so only one of them which is the requirement from Nvidia this card most likely is not a very good overclocker because of that capacitor filtering the voltages just want to throw that out there if you're in the market for a new card um, look for one with two or more I would say like this one it's got two um, right here it even says MSI stealthily revamps GeForce RTX 3080 design amid stability concerns so they added an additional custom capacitor there to filter the voltage regulations. Interesting.